the story of human evolution you were taught is wrong. It wasn't a straight line, but a tangled web of encounters, secrets, and species we are only just beginning to understand. For decades, we knew about our cousins, the Neanderthals, strong, resilient survivors of the Ice Age. Their DNA lives on in many of us today, a faint whisper from the past. But in 2010, in a remote cave in Siberia, a single tiny bone fragment revealed another branch of our family tree, a ghost species known as the Denisovans. We knew they existed alongside Neanderthals, but how closely did they interact? Were they rivals, strangers, or something more? The answer lay hidden in that same cave, waiting. Years later, another bone was found. It was unremarkable, barely an inch long, cataloged as Denisova 11. Scientists expected it to belong to a Neanderthal or a Denisovan. A young student, Samantha Brown, was tasked with analyzing its proteins. The results that came back seemed impossible. So impossible, she assumed she had made a mistake or contaminated the sample. The bone's DNA didn't match a Neanderthal, but it didn't match a Denisovan either. It was a perfect 50-50 split. How could this be? The sample was sent to the world's leading ancient DNA experts at the Max Planck Institute. The team, skeptical at first, ran the full genome sequence. The lab fell silent. What they found was the scientific equivalent of finding a unicorn, a direct, first-generation, ancient human hybrid, a child of two different worlds. They named her Denny. She was a 13-year-old girl who lived 90,000 years ago, and her story changes everything. Analysis of her mitochondrial DNA, which is only passed down from the mother, came back as pure Neanderthal. Her mother was a Neanderthal, but her nuclear DNA told a different story. Her father was a Denisovan. This wasn't a distant ancestor. This was her dad. This discovery raised a huge question. If two different species create offspring, isn't that offspring usually infertile, like a mule born from a horse and a donkey? Mules are infertile because of an odd number of chromosomes. A horse has 64, a donkey has 62, and their offspring, the mule, is left with an incompatible 63. But other hybrids, like a lagger, born from a lion and a tiger, can be fertile. This happens when the parent species are genetically close enough. Denny's existence proved that Neanderthals and Denisovans were so genetically compatible that they could produce viable and likely fertile children. But the story gets even stranger. When they analyzed her father's Denisovan DNA, they found something else lurking in his genes. Traces of Neanderthal ancestry from generations before. So Denny's Denisovan father had Neanderthal ancestors himself. This wasn't a one-time chance encounter. This was a pattern. It means these distinct human groups were meeting and having children often enough for the evidence to appear multiple times in one family's lineage. This single bone fragment shattered the simple story of human evolution. It wasn't a clean tree with separate branches. It was a swirling, interconnected river of genes. These weren't isolated groups living in fear of each other. They were interacting, sharing territory, and starting families. Think about it. Denny's mother was a Neanderthal who likely journeyed east from Europe, while her father was a Denisovan with his own Neanderthal heritage living in Siberia. Their meeting represents a crossroads of the ancient world, a point where different streams of humanity converged. And it begs the question, if this was happening between Neanderthals and Denisovans, who else was involved? Modern human DNA tells us the story didn't stop there. As our Homo sapiens ancestors migrated out of Africa, they too encountered these other humans. They also interbred. It's why many people of European and Asian descent today have between 1 to 4% Neanderthal DNA. Populations in Melanesia and Southeast Asia carry up to 6% Denisovan DNA, which may have even helped them adapt to high-altitude environments. So what happened to the Denisovans? Why did they disappear? One theory is that they didn't just die out, they were absorbed. As more successful groups like Homo sapiens expanded, the smaller Denisovan population may have been gradually bred into the larger gene pool, their unique DNA becoming diluted over thousands of years. Their legacy isn't gone, it's simply a part of us now, hidden in our very cells. But are they the only ghost species we found? In 2019, artificial intelligence analyzing human genomes found evidence of yet another ancestor, a completely unknown, super archaic hominid. This group is even more mysterious, a ghost of a ghost. They bred with Denisovans, leaving behind genetic fingerprints that scientists are now scrambling to identify. So we have Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo sapiens, and a fourth unknown group, all interbreeding across millennia. 
The tidy line of human evolution has been replaced by a messy, fascinating, and far more realistic family saga. The story of humanity is not one of replacement, but of connection and mixture. We are, in a very real sense, the ultimate hybrids. And it all came from a tiny piece of bone from a 13-year-old girl who lived 90,000 years ago. A girl who was both and neither. It makes you wonder what other secrets are buried, not in the ground, but deep within our own DNA, waiting to be discovered. Thanks for watching. If you want to explore more secrets of our ancient past, be sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, and oh, hit the notification bell.